Hello friends, I hope everybody's doing well and welcome to part four of the series. Okay, so I went and I bought the uh, high heat silver paint that's uh, made by Rust-Oleum as you can see. And I read the back panel and it said it was good to 1200 degrees. And we'll just see what happens with it. And I'll just show you uh, what I've done so far. So I painted the whole top end with the paint. I think I, I put like three or four coats of paint on there. Seemed to cover pretty good. And uh, I'm mostly concerned about the exhaust side here. But when I used my temperature gun when I was working on the 73, the one with the cracked cylinder, um, I think I got like 500 degrees out of the exhaust side here. So we'll just have to see what happens. And I'm going to have to let this dry real good. I even painted the carburetor silver. I thought that would just be a change. Um, once this dries real good, I got to see about masking it off so I could paint the rest black. I'll see what happens with that. So in the meantime, yesterday I scrubbed down the wheel spacers, the wheel weights, whatever you want to call them. I just scrubbed them down real good and I'm just going to paint them orange and what I did was I uh, scrubbed down the rims, the outer part of the rims here and I'm just going to shoot them black like I normally do and I'll get back to you as soon as anything else occurs. And I painted the hubs orange which you'll never see those once the wheels and the spacers and everything are on. But I figure I paint them orange, and so I'm going to continue. I got the uh, spacers are painted, and the outer part of the rims are painted. The other three are over here, and I also uh, painted the starter. This is really looking cool. I'm starting to really like it. And I painted the starter. And also, I think I forgot to mention that high heat silver paint. That was five bucks like all the other Rust-Oleum paints. Uh, I thought it was in I, I thought I looked up uh, one of one of the uh, high heat paints. I thought they were like eight bucks or so, but I found the Rust-Oleum for uh, pretty cheap, so. I got it all underneath real good, front and back. And there's probably going to be a couple more little bits that I missed that I'm going to have to paint. Uh, for one thing, I already uh, know I want to paint the uh, throttle cable and the choke cable. I'm going to paint those as well. But right now, I don't have the room. Because I want to stick them in the vise or, or make some kind of contraption to paint them. This is the high-low gear... Uh, lever that's all painted up now so we're getting pretty close to reassembly i'm gonna have to take uh tomorrow today and tomorrow let everything dry real good um so yeah probably in a couple of days we'll be putting it back together can't wait to put it back together and be done with it and then we have the snow plow here this is the snow plow off the 73 the uh, wear bar on the bottom is still pretty good yet, but a couple of the carriage bolts that hold it on are broke off. And I have the uh, plow that I usually plow with. The wear bar is worn out on that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it on the 73. Just to try the 73 around here. I'm not going to take the 73 uh, C8 out on the road. So I'm not going too crazy with this plow. What I'll do is I'll just scuff it up real good. And I'll do the other side. And I usually paint the plows yellow. And I paint them yellow for safety reasons. Because when I do the shopping plaza, I mean, you know the way people are. No, nobody sees you coming. Nobody sees you going. They cut in front of you, you know. I think one of the videos I made when I was plowing there, you could see some somebody uh, trying to squeeze in. They, uh, I don't know. It's just crazy down there. So... Okay, so I'll get back to you as soon as something more exciting goes on here. I just wanted to bring you up to date on what's going on here. So I uh, cleaned up the uh, positive and negative battery cables. 
and I painted them. I painted the one, of course, black, the negative side, and the positive side, I painted that red. And also uh, the choke cable, I painted that. I already painted the throttle cable. It was dry already, so I stuck it back in the truck. Okay, so now we, we can uh, continue with assembly. I'm gonna begin by uh, pulling the plow mount off and we'll be able to put this uh, battery tray back on. Now, I don't have a gasket for this, so I'm gonna have to use the gasket maker. And like I said, this, this tractor only plows, so. I mean, for the age of this, it came out semi-okay. At least I have to look at orange, orange, orange all the time. I'm sick of that. Everything orange. I try to fit as much as I can on part four here because I don't want the video to be too long. And, um... See how far I can get today with this. I have to clean the flanges up real good and everything. I wish I had black RTV. I only have orange RTV left, so. But for now, I'll put the battery tray on it. And then off camera, I'll clean everything up and put this uh, plow mount back on. So, we have to take the spacer back out. I believe it was a half inch socket we were using. Yeah. And a half inch, half inch box wrench. Just stick on there. I'm still surprised that I can't get this one bolt to clear without taking the spacer off the uh, PTO shaft here. But, got to do what you got to do. I painted the uh, oil filler cap here black for now. But I'm going to take that off and I'm going to paint that orange. And the same with the dipstick. Uh, yeah, with the dip, oil dipstick, I'm going to just paint the top of that orange. I'll probably do that today so it could dry for tomorrow. So, I already forgot to get the uh, lever. i got to put the lever back on. So, just give me one second. Sorry about that. So I painted the lever orange, I figured. So now the bushing in here, because of the paint, because of painting it. I'm going to try to get some of that paint out of the hole here. Let me get a pair of pliers. Because uh, this bushing here has to go smooth, smoothly all around here. I think that'll be alright. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, 
so. Stick our bushing up through the bottom here. Then I'll get our... Oh, wait a minute, I can't do that yet. Can't do anything with that yet. Can't put that back together until I get this apart. The two bolts that hold the uh, battery tray in. I'm getting a little tired from this whole project. <laughs> Starting to not think straight. Now once we put these bolts back in, after we have the tray on, I can't tighten these all, all the way up yet because I'm going to have to put the handlebars on. I'm going to have to be able to jiggle the uh, mount around to catch the bolts in here. Okay, so we can just plop, plop the tray on here now. How am I putting it on backwards? Yeah. Goes this way. Okay, so that's cool. Just snug these up a little bit here. See if we have a general idea of where the bolt holds. Stick one bolt on the, the left side and then I'll stick another one here. I should stand up and do this, but I think I got it to start. Yeah, it's starting. I'm still not going to tighten these up, though, because once I tighten it up, and I have to take these bolts out to put the uh, handlebars on, I won't be able to line it up. I already know that already. So, Okay, so we can go ahead and I'll put this other part back on here. can hardly see what I'm doing here. Okay, so I can <coughs> catch the nut on this and then we can tighten that up all the way. Wherever the nut went. Can't be far. Oh, there it is. 
I'm gonna have to stand up and go around the other side to catch this nut. I probably have to wash my hands a hundred times as soon as I get them dirty because we don't want to get the new painted parts dirty. Let me just for the heck of it because we never had to loosen the other bolt that holds this uh, thing on. Wait, that has no nut? No. No, it doesn't. I guess these threads must strip out or something when people take them apart. I don't know. I'll just try with the open end wrench just to make sure it's tight. I'm pretty sure it's tight because we never loosened it. Yeah, it's tight. All right, so off camera, I'm going to clean up the flange, put the uh, gasket maker on there like I don't like to do, which I don't want to do, but I have to do it. And I'll be back to you. And then I guess we'll start putting the handlebars on. Okay, so I'm back. All right, what I decided to do now next is what we're going to do is uh, put the gas tank assembly on and catch the belt on there. So, if you remember what I said about backing this off the stuff, you know what I'm going to do? I'll put a couple of nuts on here first. This way we can back that off a little bit. We said I put the brackets on here <coughs> to go to the tow bar, but we're not concerned about that right now. start these a little bit. I'll pull the whole thing back so we can... I hope the belt adjustment is going to be alright. I think it will. I almost forgot to put the fan back on the uh, shroud. If I forgot to put the fan on, then I got to take the whole thing apart again. I did the belt to be good the way it is right now. So I'm just going to uh, snug these up a little bit for now. I kind of missed the little couple spots here, but... I gotta get that three quarter inch socket off the air down there.
just going to snug these up. Because like I said, this has to be taken apart again. And I think the next thing I'm going to do is put this uh, the air deflectors back on. So I'll be back to you in a minute. It's not looking too bad. I put the uh, right side air deflector on here. Uh, I took the torch plug out that I, I use for uh, what when I want to paint. <laughs> <laughs> so I took that out and put the original plug, you know, it's regular spark plug back in. And I put the uh, left side air deflector on. I'm starting to like it. It's starting to look pretty good. Even though in the very beginning I, I, I got discouraged with the hood, but I don't know. It should be alright. And uh, I still have to... Uh, Put the tow bar on and then there's brackets to come up here. I gotta put the starter bracket on and the brackets that uh, support the uh, tow bar. I still have to do that. But I think we're gonna put the uh, handlebars on next because this top air deflector here, I can't put that on until last because the bolt has to go through this hole here and I have to put the nut on on the inside. So I think we're, we're going to do that next. Okay, friends, I'm going to put this one handlebar on, and I think we're going to conclude uh, part four right here. And then you can stay tuned for uh, part five. And I think that'll be the last segment of the series. And so what I'm going to do is, like I said, I left this uh, battery plate loose somewhat. So let's see if we can get this bolt started in here without a problem. And then I'll just bolt up the uh, handlebar here. Doing this is a little finicky, especially by yourself, but yeah, I got it started. Let me screw it in enough here so the handlebar doesn't fall on the ground. I just stuck, stuck a nice clean rag here, so you know, stuck, try not to scratch the paint. Okay, so what we have here, we have the support bracket that has to go on one way here, the right way. And then we have another bracket here, and that's for the PTO rod. So that only goes one way also. So we'll get this uh, bolt started in here. You know, those two um, bolts that hold the, uh, the two nuts that I have in there to hold the whole assembly here, I'm going to loosen those. So I'll have to fight with it. Like I said, those nuts have to come back off anyway sooner or later. So I just loosen them up a little bit here so we can move the uh, tank and shroud assembly back and forth. Oh man, giant thing doesn't want to move. All right, let's see how we make out here like this. All right, so I'll put this back on this way. Okay, the whole thing wants to be pushed forward. I 
got this on backwards, see? How come uh, nobody said anything? Forward here, get, the, get that in there like that. Like so, uh, yeah, I'll put the washer and the nut on there. And yeah, I can more or less. Uh, no, I can't tighten that up yet yeah, because I'm still gonna have to move the bracket. I have to remember to go around and make sure I tighten everything up there. So this gets a washer and a nut. Sometimes I use a needle nose uh, vice grips. So I'll grab this nut here because it's very tough to get your fingers in here especially with the arthritis and everything that I have. So let's see if we can do this without dropping the nut. If I can get it on there with my fingers. Yeah, it looks like I got it. Now I'm wondering if I should tighten this up or start the other handle on. I think I'll start the other handle on. I'll go around to the other side. Then I, I could tighten the handles up. Okay, I changed my mind. We're going to end this video right here. And thank you all for watching. And I'll see you on the next one.